Could the Baltimore Bridge have been saved? Yes. Should we have known that this collapse is going to happen? Yes. A container ship lost its power, crashed into the bridge, caused it to collapse. This is what it looked like the next morning. It's a horrible, sad event. Six people were killed, and this video goes out to them and their families. There's more than $4 billion in total losses. But did you know that the hardware was modified in 2021, and this doubled the risk of a collapse of the bridge? Can you design a ship for impact? Yes, especially if you know it's coming. And that's what this video is all about. Now, how is this guy so bold to make these statements? Well, I'm a structural engineer. I'm a licensed professional engineer. I'm a professor and I have designed bridges for impact loading in the past. Now, I've given you all my references and all my thoughts in the notes section below, so make sure you check those out. But why did the bridge collapse? Well, a massive shipping vessel hit the bridge. That ship weighed about 220,000 kips or 100,000 metric tons. If you're having a trouble to picturing what that is, think of an 18 wheeler that's fully loaded. It weighs 80 kips or 36 metric tons. So the ship weighed about 2,760 fully loaded semis, but it's going slow, right? It's going really slow, about 10 miles per hour. So that's about half the speed of a typical school zone. But the impact force was massive, 20,000 kips or 90 mega newtons. So what does this mean? Well, this is the same as 50 semis driving fully loaded, driving at, at highway speeds, smacking into the bridge column simultaneously. It had no chance, right? Ugh. So how could something going that slow be that powerful? Well, it's called momentum. It's mass times velocity, and it takes a lot of energy to stop big things, kind of like this guy. Oh my God, get out of the way, right? So how do we design for something like this? Well, we create a sacrificial structure to absorb the impact. This is called a bridge protection system, and they were popularized by the Sunshine Skyway Bridge in Tampa, Florida. Sadly, in 1980, it was also struck by a shipping vessel, collapsed and killed 35 people. And this changed our U.S. bridge codes, international bridge codes as well, to help design for this. And this is what the new Sunshine Skyway looked like 10 years later. And it's got a thing called a dolphin there in front of it and a thing called a rock island, and that's made to protect the bridge. Now, this is what the bridge looks like from the side. And if I had x-ray vision, I could look inside the water and I would see the column go all the way down and founded into the bottom of the ocean. And what we're gonna do is build a little sacrificial column in front, and that is called a dolphin. It is made out of reinforced concrete. And you've probably seen things like this. They're big and they're massive and they are absorbing these hits. You might've seen something like this called a bollard. These bollards are much smaller, but again, they're designed to protect you from vehicles driving off the road. They're like little concrete columns that just stop things. So we've got our dolphin, now let's talk about our rock island. They drive um, steel piles into the ground and then they fill those full of rock. And that's where you get a rock island and they're massive. If something sneaks past the dolphin, then they've got to deal with the rock island. It's going to protect the bridge itself. So did they have a bridge protection system on the Baltimore Bridge? And the answer is yes, they did. But it wasn't big enough. So it's kind of like a defensive lineman coming through here and just getting, just blowing through um, the running back trying to block them to get to the quarterback. That is um, the Dolly ship there, and those are the dolphins. They're kind of tiny, right? Not big enough. So why were the dolphins so small? Well, it's because they were part of the original 1970s construction, and this was before container ships were allowed in the harbor itself. And what would a modern dolphin has done? Would it have been able to stop the ship? And the answer is yes. So for example, there is Baltimore. That's where the bridge collapse happened. And just about an hour away or so in Delaware at the Memorial Bridge, they're actually actively building dolphins. They started before the collapse itself. You can read about it in some of the links that I have below. That's what they're supposed to look like once they're done. And so if those dolphins were upsized like this or so, my calculation 
simulation show an 80 foot diameter dolphin rock field dolphin would have taken a full the full on load of the dolly hitting it and it would have stopped it dead so when were the container ships first allowed in the baltimore harbor this is a very very interesting question actually 2015 the harbor was expanded and that should have been a signal to the universe that we needed to do something or look at something about this but in 2021 something even bigger happened the harbor was modified again it was expanded again and this doubled the number of container ships in the harbor and this should have been super signal to everyone involved that we needed to do something. So how do you design for these crazy high extreme events? Well, we use something called structural reliability. And the goal here is to make things safe enough. And the best way I can explain this is kind of like a swing set. You know, swings aren't the safest things in the world, but we try to make them as safe as we can, but you can still hurt yourself on them. We try to do the same thing with our structures, make them as safe as we can. And we do this by asking critical questions. One critical question is, is the event big enough to cause a collapse? Well, in the case of the Baltimore Bridge, the answer is yes. And is the structure of major importance? Again, in the case of the Baltimore Bridge, the answer is yes. And how often does the event happen? Well, we use something called a return interval to calculate that or estimate that. And typically for things like floods or hurricanes or earthquakes, those return intervals are like 50 to 100 years. So it happens, but it doesn't happen that often. But how often do container ships go by the bridge? Well, the calcs show about 600 ships per year, but the bridge was the only way in and out. That means each ship goes by twice, once on the way in and once on the way out. And both those are dangerous passes. That's 1,200 passes per year. And what is the likelihood of a hit or a strike? Well, that gets a little bit tougher. That's not so clear. What Ashto says you're supposed to do is to do your own analysis. Well, that's tough. That's really, really tough. And they said, well, if you can't estimate how likely it is that these ships are going to lose control or veer off pass and, and, and get hit, then recommend one in about 12,000. So one in about 12,000 times, one hit for every 12,000 passes. So Ashto combines all of this into a one equation because we're engineers and we love equations. We like to predict things. And here's a simplified version of that equation. It looks like this. So we take the number of collapses per year. It is equal to the number of ships per year times the probability of collapse times the protection factor. This, we want to make this as low as we possibly can. This depends on the harbor itself. This depend we have to calculate or we have to use a given value and this is how we minimize this this is say hey if these other things are too too large we put in a bridge protection system to shut this sucker down so what did they find from doing all these calculations hmm. we don't know i'm not even sure if the analysis was done it hasn't been released or discussed or talked about but if NPR claims that the top U.S., 15 U.S. ports out there all have modern bridge protection systems, as in much, 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 much more larger bridge protection systems than there was in the Baltimore Harbor. And Baltimore is in this same category. It is in about the top 15 or 20 ports in the United States. So what did I find from my calculations? They definitely needed a bridge protection system. There was a hit estimate to happen about every 10 years or so. And so why didn't they have a bridge protection system? Well, I think we need a more formal review process, okay? I, and, and, and we need to say who is responsible for what. And we need to define what will they do to make that responsibility right. So when a harbor is modified, it should trigger a review, as in that should make people have to review everything. And this review should be peer reviewed by a third party group to make sure that they agree with it. And the port should be required to fund the bridge modifications. Remember, the port is the economic center. The port is the reason why ships are coming and more ships are coming. They should 
pay to make things safe for those around it. And the port should not be expanded until that bridge is deemed to be safe and protected. And the federal government should oversee everything in this process. And there needs to be checks and balances all along the way for all the groups involved. So I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what did happen, but I can tell you there's a lot of these processes that seem to be missing. And I'm going to make a prediction that in the future, you're going to see these things happen. I'd love to hear what your comments are. Do you think I'm crazy? Do you think I'm on to something? Do you think I missed something? Please, please, please fill up the comment box below because I want to discuss and see what it is you have to say. But what did we learn from all of this? Well, the Sunshine Skyway Bridge was a great lesson. It taught us about dolphins and rock islands. It gave us a bridge code. It told us what to do. And I think we've learned that by and large. But the Baltimore Bridge collapse. I hope we learn the who and the how. I hope we learn from this the process to protect people in the future. And a total disclaimer, I am not involved in this. I don't know any inside information about this. I just found information on the internet. And guy, by the way, you can find all of that in my references below. And I do have some background in this area. But if you want to help me out, you can, number one, watch my videos. I have other collapse videos. I have other cool engineering videos and a ton of videos on concrete. You can share my videos with other people out there that you think would be interested, you think would like to learn more about them. And of course, like, subscribe, and leave me a comment, baby. And you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at concrete.tyler or at this website at concretefreaks.com. Please. Check out my other videos that are out there in the ethos. Take care, everybody. Bye.